can only imagine at this point, the actual journalists at the Washington Post are ready to resign. And there's probably very few of them left. Most of the people who work at the Washington Post are probably just sophists and activists. But of those who are actual journalists, veterans, perhaps people who have spent a long career working for this prestigious paper, they're probably losing it. You've got Taylor Lorenz. She is a whiny diva and she's just endless drama. She's not doing reporting anymore. She's just a shock jock that the paper has to generate buzz, I guess. I mean, that's kind of sad. And I def- I've defended Taylor Lorenz in the past, but boy, has she really gone off the deep end. You know, back in the day, there were stories that would come out. I could message her and be like, here's some more info. And she'd be like, cool. And she would either correct or she would incorporate it. Be like, I got it. And I was like, that's great. I was like, she does a great job. Like, you, you might not like her reporting. But then she started getting weird. She started going after kids. And it was like, why are you, why are you reporting on m- children? It's just, you know, whatever. I guess, you know, some people think it's newsworthy because they're, they're prominent on social media. So I get it. She started doing things that were deemed unethical. Then she started complaining about all the threats she got, and she instantly evolved into pop culture, culture war diva. And that's where she is now. Not a journalist, but a drama generator. Now, look, it's true that I'm often trending on Twitter generating drama, but that's passive. You know, I host the Tim, Tim Cast IRL podcast and Tim Pool Daily Show podcasts and YouTube channels, and we talk about the news of the day. Taylor Lorenz writes about herself, writes conflict of interest stories. I mean, let me give you a few examples. The the main story right now, first and foremost, Taylor Lorenz shrugs off death threats directed at libs of TikTok weeks after doxing Twitter personality. Taylor Lorenz went on TV and cried because of the threats that she received. She often talks about how difficult it is to be a journalist because of the threats that you get and how they could take anything from you, from the internet, and use it against you. And she's going to shrug off that libs of TikTok is getting death threats. Hmm. Well, the interesting thing is Taylor Lorenz is the one who doxed libs of TikTok. You may remember that uh, I, along with the Daily Wire crew, put up a billboard in Times Square saying Taylor Lorenz doxed libs of TikTok. It's a fact. It is a statement of fact. Now, I guess this is this is challenging because legally it's an opinion. Here's what I'm saying. Based on all the relevant information, And my perception of what doxing is, based on the definition, Taylor Lorenz did dox libs of TikTok. It's funny that Taylor Lorenz can come out and say doxing is wrong, you shouldn't do it, and then do it to libs of TikTok. That Taylor Lorenz can come out and cry and say death threats are so bad, and then basically shrug off the death threats directed at libs of TikTok when she's the one who doxed libs of TikTok. All right, let me slow down. For those that aren't familiar, libs of TikTok is a Twitter account. Many of you are probably aware of it by now. And it just reposts posts from libs from TikTok and other stories and leaked information, things like that. For this, the left is extremely angry. Well, we got a couple stories in this vein. The main point I want to drive at with this segment is the hypocrisy of corporate press and the lack of prestige. If you work at the Washington Post, just know you're basically working at TMZ. And you know what? That's kind of mean because I actually respect to a certain degree what TMZ does. Not you, Washington Post. I know for a fact there are veteran reporters. I've been working at the Post for a long time and they're depressed because the Washington Post hires this millennial drama queen with no principles to just whine and opine and contradict herself. I can only imagine those that work there talk about the great reporting they've done in the past. They're just like, what have we become? We got Elon Musk. Elon Musk chimed in saying, why? Why isn't Twitter taking these death threats seriously? This is what Taylor Lorenz, of course, is is responding to like, oh, here we go, Elon Musk. But we did see some action taken following this. We also have internal communications from Twitter talking about how they want to ban libs of TikTok and they'll get away with it because no one will quit the platform. That's the reality, I suppose. But let's take a look at what's going on these tweets. And then we also have our good friend Cameron Kasky of Parkland uh, Notoriety, who is, it's it's funny, dismissing the death threats, responding to someone who literally cried on TV about death threats. Okay. You have tribalists, that's the left, be it leftist, socialists, or establishment Democrat types. These people are tribalists. Principles do not drive them. What drives them is adherence to the tribe and sophistry. Any argument to justify their actions, even if it contradicts themselves. 
on the quote unquote right, which is actually much larger than the right. It's post liberals, disaffected liberals, moderates, libertarians, conservatives. You have principle and facts. And that is the rule. On the left, it's the exception. You know, sometimes on the left, you'll get a, a, a true response with evidence. I'm not saying you never do. It's just it's the exception when you do. Here's a story from Fox News. Taylor Lorenz previously sobbed on MSNBC decrying the online harassment of women. Washington Post internet culture columnist Taylor Lorenz was quick to dismiss the death threats being aimed at libs of TikTok just weeks after she doxed a popular Twitter personality. Libs of TikTok shared a screenshot of a Twitter user who sent her a message claiming a pipe bomb was on her way and urged her to end her own life. Hi, FBI, I'm being threatened with a pipe bomb. Can you please look into this? Libs of TikTok publicly asked. Glenn Greenwald, a vocal critic of Lorenz, reacted. This is what it's like to be a woman on the internet who got doxxed by a newspaper owned by the world's richest man. Actual death threats and encouragement of suicide. Adding, since liberal outlets only care when this happens to the rich, famous national journalists, they'll ignore it. Quote, exactly. And I receive about another five death threats in addition to this since yesterday, Libs of TikTok told Greenwald. Libs later provided an update saying she received about a dozen death threats and how Twitter has not removed any of the accounts of those who sent the threats. That caught the attention of billionaire Elon Musk, who was in the process of buying the social media giant. Why? Elon Musk wondered. That exchange was mocked by Lorenz, who tweeted, of course. Lorenz accused Libs of TikTok of escalating attacks against the LGBTQ community, as the Twitter icon is known for sharing videos showing woke ideology being promoted at schools, including the exposure of adult content to children. She swiped Glenn Greenwald as a right wing influencer, despite his openly liberal. No, no, I'm going to stop you there, Fox News. He's openly progressive politics, saying he has notoriously downplayed harassment against women. Women journalists and said death threats are an inevitable part of a public platform. Well, that's true. And it's unfortunate. We should not tolerate it, to be honest. You know, you know what? If you are anywhere on the political compass other than authoritarian left, you're right wing. That means So Taylor Lorenz is an authoritarian left-leaning individual. Glenn Greenwald is a libertarian left-leaning individual, and it's fairly obvious. His politics are progressive, but he calls out the authoritarianism, the cult-like behavior. So he's right-wing. Okay. She went on to falsely accuse the conservative side of Babylon Bee of having invested in libs of TikTok. It's so crazy. She's not doing reporting anymore. It's really insane what she's become. Taylor, you probably should have reached out to me before reporting fake news. The Babylon Bee has never invested in anything. My personal investments are not Babylon Bee investments, Dylan told Lorenz. Dylan later shared a screenshot showing he was temporarily auto-blocked by Lorenz with a a disclaimer saying she uses Twitter safety mode that flagged his interactions as potentially abusive or spammy. The Washington Post declined to comment. Well, our good friend Cameron Kasky chimed in. Cameron Kasky is the perfect example of sophistry on the left. Cameron cares not to actually engage. You know, for a while, I thought he was was pretty cool because I'm pretty sure he's in an interview with like Dave Rubin and he was like trolly on Twitter. You know, he was kind of just going with and being like, yo, whatever. But then he decided to play an outright sophistry. You know, that is to say, let me show you. Taylor Lorenz says, of course, to the Elon Musk screenshot. Cameron Kasky says, if they want to play the death threats game, they can get in line. That ish didn't phase me when I was 17 because I wasn't a little effing baby. Libs of TikTok, go cry yourself to sleep. Oh, I absolutely love it. Cameron, thank you. I agree. I agree. Libs of TikTok complaining about death threats. It's like, here's what I think the real issue is. Libs of TikTok is complaining that Twitter won't take action against death threats. That, I think, warrants being talked about. I don't think Libs of TikTok is just saying, oh, woe is me. People are threatening my life for the most part. I think that's a part of it. Cameron, I understand you've received death threats. I've also received them. That sucks. It's wrong and it shouldn't happen. But you're responding to Taylor Lorenz, who literally cried at receiving harassment and threats. I just I'm sorry. I just love it. This was a brilliantly crafted tweet. And perhaps Cameron is actually trolling Taylor Lorenz. It's the only thing I can really say. Pointing out if you, it's like subtweeting her. It's really great. Now, I don't think he's actually subtweeting her. I think what we're seeing here is that there is no principle among these prominent left wing players. There are prominent left wing people who I believe are honest. You got Jimmy Dore, you got Glenn Greenwald, you got a handful of others. 
but they tend to be anti-establishment and anti-war leftists. So there are some people where I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. Kyle Kalinske, I think is a good dude. Crystal Ball, absolutely. They're progressive there on the left for sure. But Crystal with uh, Sagar in, in, uh, on breaking points, you know, they clearly care about these issues with a difference of opinion. And I think it's fantastic. Cameron Kasky is just a troll. I don't think he actually believes anything he says. I think he just goes on Twitter to rile people up. And I think perhaps this really was a masterful subtweet of Taylor Lorenz. So if that's the case, Cameron, I don't want to, I don't want, maybe it's going right over my head, but I'm just going to say, bravo. If they want to play the death threats game, they can get in line. Libs of TikTok and go cry yourself to sleep. It's just fascinating because Taylor Lorenz literally cried and played the death threats game. Wow. Well, let's talk about the, the double standard here. Elon Musk reacts to graphic death threats aimed at libs of TikTok. Following this, libs of TikTok posted an Instagram saying how it started and swipe to see how it's going. Thanks, Elon. Showing a variety of emails saying that Twitter has suspended those making the death threats. Following Elon Musk's reaction, it looks like some changes actually happened. In response to Taylor Lorenz, Libs of TikTok says the person who cried on air about mean tweets and speaks out for women facing online harassment is upset that Elon questioned why Twitter didn't do anything about the dozens of online threats I, a woman, received. Ah, you must certainly love the hypocrisy. You must love, love, love the hypocrisy. Let's talk about what's going on behind the scenes. Let's talk about the establishment machine. The first thing I want to say is Taylor Lorenz story, double standards. Why am I even talking about it? You know, I hate talking about it. We had Dr. Chloe Carmichael on Timcast IRL uh, just over a week, a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, Dr. Chloe Carmichael is a clinical psychologist. And she mentioned to me, she said, Tim, on your show on IRL, you said you don't even want to talk about the double standard anymore because it's just so obvious. And she's like, but you have to. You have to because when you stop talking about it, you start to accept that it's the way things are and you should call it out and challenge it. And that's a good point. It's also true that you need all of the all of the political firepower you can get for your arguments. And that is when someone asks you about something, you want up to date and relevant information proving the machine is lying. Let me give you a good example right now. The left says Republicans aren't playing by the rules and they're steamrolling us and Democrats just keep giving what they want. And I'm like, like what? Answer the question. Well, we want universal health care. Republicans blocked it. So you want thing and you're having a hard time getting thing and that's Republicans not playing fair. Well, I'll tell you this. I want thing. Republicans don't give me thing. They, co- they give the Democrats what they want. Here's an example. Gun control. The obvious one. Democrats say we want to ban the AR-15. We want to ban X, Y and Z. Then the Republicans say, OK, we'll give you some of that. Where is what I get? You know, you say we want you, we, we want universal health care. But the Republicans blocked us and all we got was Obamacare. So you got some of what you wanted, but not all of it. But that's Republicans playing not fair. I'll tell you this. I'll take some of what I want once, please. It doesn't happen. Republicans don't do anything. Republicans just slow down the Democrats. That's it. So let's take a look at this double standard. Libs of TikTok obtains leaked internal Slack convo between frustrated Twitter employees wanting to ban her. Absolutely fascinating. Let's just jump to some of these uh, internal Slack messages. So we have this from their social water cooler. It's a link to Ari Drennan saying Chaya Raichik of Libs of TikTok is going to get somebody killed. Feels more likely that Libs of TikTok will get a verified badge out of this than a platform ban. Happy Pride. But employees of the conversation added, like, I don't get how this account, which exists solely to generate targeted violence at marginalized people, continues to be allowed to post. These people are evil. And I'll tell you why. To the Twitter equivalent of I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, reposting people's stuff publicly, try harder, cry harder. I had a person publish my address. I reported to Twitter and they said, I had a person dox me and Twitter said, we don't care. On YouTube, I had a guy publish my address and then threatened to kill me. And YouTube said, we don't care. I even forwarded it. I don't know. Maybe they took it down eventually. But I was like, how is it? that these videos exist, doxing me and threatening my life, and you do nothing. Fortunately, Elon Musk tweeted, and now is enough to get these death threats taken down. But this should be the easiest way to understand there's no principle here. Now, look, 
Crystal Ball and Kyle Kalinske. I'm big fans. I'm a big fan. I think they're fantastic and they're good people. And I think they have principles because they'll actually talk to you. And if you're wrong, they'll tell you you're wrong and they'll back it up because they're smart people. Tremendous respect. I think Kyle gets some things wrong. I get, the, I get things wrong too. And so maybe it's the sources we read where we, you know, we're at conflict, but I genuinely think Kyle tries to be you know, a good person and, and, uh, uh, and as Crystal Ball as well. Good for them. Then you've got the Young Turks. They willfully mislead people. You've got Taylor Lorenz. It seems to be that with the left, Covington kids, lie. Jesse Smollett, lie. Hands up, don't shoot, lie. Russiagate, lie. Ukraine gate, lie. Ahmed Arbery, lie. It's all misleading. W- what was it? They, they, NBC edited the audio of George Zimmerman, Zimmerman to make him sound like a racist. And then they say, we are the right ones. No. The left, it is the rule that they are typically getting things wrong. It is the rule they get things wrong and the exception when they get things right. That is to say, let's call it 60-40. For a lot of the mainstream news sources, I use them. They're NewsGuard certified. I use them. All right? I'll use The Hill. I'll use CNN when I know what they're saying is true. As for other outlets, I tend to just go by the NewsGuard certification. If NewsGuard has an issue with that, I don't know what to tell you, NewsGuard. If there is a green check mark I, and I'm opining on a story, I'm assuming it's correct based on you assuming they're publishing correct information. But anyway, I digress. On the right, you have a tendency. The rule is that they get things right. They, not, not all of them co- called out Covington because sometimes they do get things wrong. Then you have a lot of diehard Trump supporters that get things wrong a lot. You got the Q cult people. Hmm. The left has similar conspiracy nonsense. It's just not prominent. It's not hyped up. Why is it that the QAnon stuff is so known, but the blue anon stuff is often overlooked? It's because mainstream corporate press screams QAnon nonstop, even though there's like barely anybody who believes that stuff. The funny thing is they'll cite these polls where they're like 57% of Republicans believe that a pedo cult runs the world. And I'm like, dude, they're talking about Jeffrey Epstein and Bill Gates. Like we know the Epstein stuff is true because Ghislaine Maxwell has been convicted. So if people then surmise based on that with prominent people going to that island that they're all in cahoots together running the show, well, it's not an unreasonable assumption, but it just might not be true. I'm certainly certain most people just think it is true because why wouldn't you? But look, me, I'm not about conspiracies. I can say, yeah, Bill, Bill Clinton flew on that plane. Bill Gates was friends with this guy. Take that for what it is. I'd love to see some hard evidence on what was going on, but uh, they haven't released the client list for Ghislaine Maxwell, so I'd love to see that. wonder if it includes a lot of those prominent people. So Alex Jones talks about Epstein. They say he's a crazy crackpot. Turns out he was right about that. You see, that's the issue. I don't think Alex Jones is always right. That's why we have the Alex Jones was right jar. The Alex Jones was right jar is a point about how he says a lot of crazy things. And when he gets it right, you put money in the jar. If Alex Jones was always right, we would literally not need the jar. We'd be like, yep, he's a journalist. That's the joke. They don't get it, though. But Alex Jones has made some pretty accurate statements and and, and predictions. And people point that out because he also said stuff like 5G cell towers and, you know, animal hybrids, human animal hybrids, stuff like that. And, And some of that is based in fact, but it's really stretched to an extreme degree. I often point that out. Here's what we see. Over at Twitter, they are actually saying we should ban this account because of what it does. Are you going to ban Media Matters? Media, uh, Media Matters posts things out of context. A Media Matters reporter posted fake news about me, just made stuff up. And then when I said, hey, that's not correct, they said, I hope a bird poops on your hat and gets in your eyebrow. And I was like, what? That's allowed? Well, where the Twitter employees say these accounts exist solely to direct violence at the right. Yeah. It makes sense, though. When you look at the primetime January 6th hearing, Tucker Carlson wasn't airing it for the most part. He was crit- he was, it, was, it was like a reaction of it, criticizing it. Every other channel just marched in lockstep. The fascinating thing to me about all of that, Fox News, the odd person out, challenging the, 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 the machine and the lies. Just one. That's it. It makes sense, right? Most people are wrong about this stuff. Most people are not researching it. The January 6th committee is non-adversarial. It is a bunch of establishment shills feigning bipartisanship, but they did not let on any dissenting voice. Bipartisan is meaningless. This is what I want to show you with this. That's why I wanted to talk about the Taylor Lorenz story. How can someone who cries about death threats shrug off death threats? 
they are not serious people. So I give you this. When you're talking to a friend or a family member, this is why I think we should highlight the double standards. You should point out the manipulations in the machine. So you can say there's a double standard. And when they say, no, I watch the news and be like, yes, but the news is lying to you most of the time. Just tell them this. The Covington kid story was not true. Remember that? I don't know. What was that? The kid on the stairs, the Lincoln Memorial. Turns out the Indian guy, the Native American guy, sorry, was the guy who walked up to him. Oh, hands up, don't shoot. Remember that? Pull it up. Obama's Justice Department found hands up, don't shoot was not true. Come on. Jussie Smollett, do you believe that? Show them this stuff. These people are not serious. They don't care. They want power. Call it out. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. My back. Yeah, I know. Most of you probably know. I know. My back hurts, but I'm going to keep working through it. I hate not working. Got to be honest. The two days I could not work in the morning, and it was really hard to do IRL as well because I'm like struggling to sit up. I strained a muscle in my back. It's just slept wrong. I got to, I got to, it happens. It's really it. Just, it happens. But, um, you know, doing my best. So I'll make sure to get that workout for you guys. I really do appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next segment at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast, and I'll see you all then.